Hey guys, welcome to Taste of Recovery, the podcast. Where we explore one's honest journey of surrender, willingness, acceptance, and courage. I'm Alicia Spenlove. And I'm Eden Sassoon. Please join us every week for authentic and raw conversations with inspiring people in recovery. We invite you and our guests to get real because the disease of addiction does not discriminate. Oh no, it doesn't. And we go through so many emotions. We laugh, we cry, we pray. So get ready for a taste of recovery. I found heaven from backing out of hell. Hey everyone, it's an honor to have Jeremy Jackson in the studio with us. Enjoy his taste of recovery. Hello, Hello. Jeremy Jackson. Congrats on the show, ladies. Thank Thank you. you. We're so happy to have you. Really cool. Like, so happy to have you. And were you just in Orange County? We were just in, yes, we were. Yeah, yeah, I saw you guys. Shout out to Jenny. Yeah. She's a friend of yours, huh? Jenny's Sober Lifestyle. That's right, baby. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was was a great day. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool little studio, cool little place. Right? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to opening her opening that place up and stuff. I feel like she's going to cause a big shakedown in the biz and help some people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's what we're all doing here, right? That's right. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? There you go. Like, what gets you out of bed in the morning, Jeremy? <sighs> Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um. Like- you know, yeah, just the opportunity to be of service, you know, to get the real juice. Go go hunt for the the real juice. Find it. One day I, at a time? Yeah. I mean, I got to go find it, you know. Um, I have realized that uh, my willpower uh, sucks. I, I haven't been able to adhere to a diet plan. I haven't been able to adhere to a workout plan. I haven't been able to stay faithful to girlfriends. I haven't, I, my willpower sucks, right? I don't have the power. The needed power is not there, right? And there's one use of the will that has been successful for me. And it's to use my will to step back into the will of God's. That's it. That's what my willpower is there for. That's what my free will is there for, for that and that only because it's failed in every other way. What, what, what else is it good for? What else am I supposed to use? The will, right? To get present to the presence, present to the presence. That is the productive, successful, useful use of the will. How did you get to this place today? There must be obviously identification with those that are suffering out there now. I found heaven from backing out of hell. (laughs) That's how, you know, doing it wrong every which way, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing what doesn't work. If I have a broken toaster and it doesn't work, I throw it away. My TV stops working, I throw it away. We have all these mechanisms, these belief systems, these behaviors, these judgments, these opinions, these peculiarities and specificities to us, and they don't work, and we are so not apt to throw them away. We just want to use them harder, stronger, or smarter. But like a fly trying to get out of a window, more of the same is not going to get through the window. Harder the same doesn't get you anywhere. That quantum leap, that leap of faith, that other street that I know nothing about, that might have some discomforts, that might take longer. I've never been there. I might see people I don't know. That's the way. You know? It's pretty cool. I, for some reason, this is coming to me right now, but as a mother, like, your mom must be so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my mom still... Loves her anxiety and her uh, fear, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, can I... Rub off on her. Or can I learn how to be happy anyway? You know? It's not about uh, loving Jesus. It's about loving Judas. You know, it's not about, finally, I'm a big boy because my mom's happy. It's like, hey, even if mom has her little... I still gotta, you know, I know it's weird. 
It's Ooh. a paradoxical freaking life, man. <laughs> Whoa, everything that I thought was up is down, and everything I thought was down is up, and everything I thought was in is out, and everything I thought was out was in. What? You know? Where did this Jeremy 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 come from? <laughs> Jeremy 9000? <laughs> Where did this yeah. model come from? Uh, a lot, definitely a lot of help. Definitely a lot of mentorship. Definitely a lot of, uh, you know, the, they say the quickest way to rehabilitate a, a wounded dog is to put him in a kennel full of healthy dogs, you know? So the brotherhood, the fellowship, the connection, um, monkey see, monkey do, man, doing the stuff that I've never done before. I love this analogy. It's like when you're out there lost, miserable, scared, full of fear, you're drowning at sea essentially. And then here come these dudes, man. And, and they're floating above the water and they're doing this with their arms. Mm. And they're like, get in, get in the boat. And you're like, I'm drowning out there. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I can't see the boat. So I don't jump in the boat because I can't see the boat because the, I don't have a conscious awareness of the boat. It doesn't make sense to me. I've never experienced that boat. So it's invisible to me. I don't know. But you jump in the boat and you do the things the dudes are doing that said they're safe. And all of a sudden, the boat materializes. You see the boat. So we're in, in our worst, essentially drowning at sea. And, and all of the stuff that works, that helps, is invisible, right? Well, I'll take that back because I have a new, new take on invisible. Uh, we don't have a conscious awareness of it. We just have to let it go. We have to let go of what we think we need and what we think we know for an open mind to a new experience, which that, which, uh, that, which we have yet to experience and or have a conscious awareness of or a working experience with. How do you do something you've never done? How do you know something you've never known? How do you be something you've never been? How do you? Mentorship, right? Mm. First and foremost. How do you know if you choose the right mentor? Mm. If your perspective is off. Yeah, that's true. That's a really good question. Um, well, if you don't, you gotta feel it. You gotta, you gotta feel it. You gotta feel it, right? Yeah, you gotta right. feel it. The, the cosmic funnel of love. Mm. There's this cosmic funnel of love. It's out there. It's always been there. And uh, whatever is going on in your body that you don't like, you can release it too. And you can be a pleasure seeker. You can turn into a 24-7 pleasure seeker. You don't have to accept or allow any sort of discomfort, any sort of hate, pain, judgment. You can release it to the cosmic funnel of love. And if you're not ready to release it, you're not ready to release it. But when it feels good, when it feels right, you know, that uh, what? You can uh, relate this thing called God to the feeling you get with a close friend. Mm. You know, when you guys are just heart to heart, eye to eye, sharing a taco, and there's that moment that goes by, you're like, oh, that's God. We're here. We're both really here. This is cool. Special, you know? Mentorship's been a big part of it. Um, mm. Mantras, dude. Affirmations and mantras. Huge part of it. Oh my gosh. Embrace the mystery. Embrace the mystery. Embrace the mystery. Embrace the mystery. I started just telling myself, embrace the mystery all day long, every day, because I found that I think I know enough about certain stuff, so I close the door to it. Or I think uh, uh, just the sprinter mentality in me, chop wood, carry water, do a good job, put it on the shelf, walk away, take on a new thing, take on a new thing. Okay, that's done. I just want to put a ribbon on it, you know, set it and forget it and walk away. And, uh, you know, everything I know has gotten me to where I've gotten and it won't get me any further. I have to continue to experience and engage with new experiences to rise on this tide of spirituality and so I just started saying embrace the mystery. Rather than focusing on the problem, I focus on the solution. So when the constant thought, because your thoughts create feelings, feelings create 
belief systems, belief systems create behaviors, behaviors shape the entirety of your life. And what you're looking at in your life, experience and feeling is definitely a manifestation of everything you ever felt. And I'm sick and tired of changing how I operate or trying to change how I operate because it's freaking hard and it's real, real hard to change how other people operate, right? Impossible. Actually, you can do it for the interim and then it blows up in your face. So I just started telling myself stuff. Embrace the mystery, embrace the mystery, embrace the mystery, embrace the mystery. Checks late in the mail, embrace the mystery. Going through a hard time, embrace the mystery. Traffic on the freeway, embrace the mystery. Oh my gosh, it's all falling apart, embrace the mystery, right? Ah, everything's going really good, I finally figured it out now, yay! Embrace the mystery. There's more to the story, more to be revealed. And the for three years of, of doing that, I have literally return to like a childlike state of curiosity and wonder. I'm on a journey. I pick up rocks. Now I started looking at rocks again. I started being curious. Why do we pick up rocks when we're kids, right? We want right. to check out bugs. We want to ask a million questions. What's that mean? Why does that mean that? Why does that mean that? Right? We want to know all this stuff. And we're in a constant state of fun, curiosity, um, and learning and sponging and drawing correlations between stuff and we're just dreaming and it's beautiful, but we lose it. And it's because we thought we knew enough about rocks. I've seen enough rocks to stop looking at rocks. I'm a big boy now. Don't look at rocks. And we're just, rocks are just an analogy, right? For curiosity, general curiosity. So, you know, we heard it a million times. Life's a journey, not a destination, you know? And like, okay, that sounds cool. You know, sounds cool, but I got, Shit, I gotta do, you know what I mean? But yeah, okay, cool, journey. All right. But, 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 a lot of buts. But I'm too, too anxious right now. I can't be, I can't be. I'll do the journey tomorrow. So these things, the self, the self, self doesn't reveal self to self. Self doesn't reveal self to self. It speaks to me in my own voice. So I believe it. And I want to be curious again. I want to be childlike again. I want to return to the state of wonder. Um, so I just started saying embrace the mystery over top of everything. And because that became my most frequent thought, it became my feeling, it became my reality. So I'm in a new world just because I embrace the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> you got me crying. And there's a golden, that's called the golden key, by the way. What? That, that practice is called the golden, the golden key. key. The golden, the golden key. key. Embrace written, the mystery. Written by Emmett Fox. He let You did this on your yeah. Instagram recently, probably. no? Probably, yeah. Okay, keep yeah. going. Um, he uh, was a, a spiritual consultant to Bill W. in the 30s. Okay. And he led a church called the New Thought Movement. He healed plants and animals. Hmm. to realize divine love is the only power on the face of the planet and there is no other power on the face of the planet save for things we give power to through thought and thought alone. Yeah, there's the quote, a man is what he thinks about all day long. That's true. By Norman Vincent Peale and... It's so true. Mm -hmm. If your mind is down and out, you're down and out. But we're so programmed as, mm -hmm. as people, as humans to be in the program of, of just in that box, in that cycle. Let's go to school. Let's make money. Let's go home. Let's eat. Let's be with our family. Let's watch TV. It was just the Groundhog's Day. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I've known you for quite a few years, years even yeah. though we've had some close times and yet, I feel like you're a brother, and yet we haven't had a lifetime together. Yeah. But the experiences we've shared. Um, I feel like our souls yeah, knew each speak. other before we became this. And I, but it wasn't I, time yet. 100%, you know? but I'm seeing but you today. But we loved each other for, yes. for who we saw we really yes, were. but now I see you today, and I love you even more. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, yeah. how, did you, how did you take that programming, and now you're this new man sitting in front of me? Well, I mean... If you like where you're at, if you're happy, if you're joyous and you're free, then there's no need to change anything. You know, if you like it, cool. I got nothing for you. You know, I got nothing for you, but congratulations, you know. Um, but if you don't like how you feel and you don't like how you think, and if it's not lifting you and or anybody up, if it's not 
for the greatest good of of all, you know, and it's not loving and it's not bountiful and and grateful and abundant and productive and constructive and, you know, therapeutic and curious, you know, enhancing and all that kind of stuff, then um, you can change it. You can change it because your, your mind is your computer. It's the data, you know, and your nervous system is the hardware. It's the fire, the wiring and your mind is the firing and your hardware is the wiring and you can't change your hardware, but you can change the data. So the Bible says, like, as a man thinketh, so mm-hmm. shall mm-hmm. he become, right? It says, protect thy heart with all diligence for out of it come the issues of life. The feelings that we're generating. And then we talk about the four agreements, man. The first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. And impeccable comes from the Latin word peccatus, which means without sin. Without sin in your word. Judgment, hate, grief. No. Sex addiction. No. Food addiction. No. Cursing. No. None of those are sins. All of those things that we do are symptoms of the underlying sin which is an illusion of separation from God. The illusion of separation from God, it comes through thought and thought alone because you could never be separate from. You've always been a part of, you'll always be a part of. Every man, woman, and child is a brother and sister. We're all a finger on the hand of God who's playing the piano. We don't work independently, right? We work through. And we don't judge each other. We don't hate each other. Ah, I would have played better, but the dang middle finger, he was all, had an attitude today, right? We're all fingers on that hand. So the illusion of separation, if I had more of this, then I'd be happy. If he wasn't chewing with his mouth open, then I could be at peace, right? If it, it's sunny, man, I was really hoping for a cold day. That's judging the master. That's judging the art, right? And... It's an illusion, and if it wasn't an illusion, it would work. It would work. You could control, manipulate, cut people down, steal, rob. You could be a pirate, and you'd be happy. But I don't know about you. Have you ever tried to live like a pirate? I have. I have. Lie, cheat, steal, right? Scrooge McDuck sliding on our pile of money. Nope, it's not happy. Mm. It doesn't make you happy. And we get sick. And only hurt people hurt people. You know, healed people don't hurt people. Healed people heal people. Transformed people don't hurt people. They transform people. So this ability to not get separate from, not create an illusion of separate separation from the divine spirit, from the light, from love, right? From oneness, from togetherness, whatever you want to call it not be separate from it simply in thought is like the answer to life. How do you get there every day? Mm, The mantras were a huge part of it. The reprogramming of my brain because the, the brain actually reprograms the subconscious and then it just becomes your truth. So I could sit here and tell you all about, um, I don't know, pretend you never swam in your whole life. You never went swimming. You never jumped in a deep end of a pool. And I could tell you all about swimming. And I could recommend books to you on swimming. And I could give you a three-hour lecture on swimming, right? But no matter how much you read or how much you heard, you wouldn't be a great swimmer. You have to integrate it. You have to get in the water. You have to experience it. You have to practice it, right? So the seed, the ground, the harvest, the seed, the ground, the harvest, the thought, the frequency. Once the thought becomes a belief system, it becomes a frequency. And the frequency is, is everything is a mirror. Your, the, your out picturing world is a reflection of your in picturing, right? And if you have a limited belief system, if there's any form of lack, judgment, you know, insecurity, and you don't have to get over your insecurities. You just have to not think about them and replace them with thoughts of divine love, divine power, ultimate good of you and and all of mankind. 
What is that? And you meditate upon those things and you think of those things and those things alone. And once you do, you don't, you're no longer saying a prayer. You're no longer doing a meditation. You've become a meditation and you've become a prayer and you've become the song universe, uni, una, uno, verse, song, one song. This is the one song. And you're a very important part in the song. You're a very important instrument. And it's nothing wrong with that out here. It's just, am I in tune? I'm out of tune. I don't like the song anymore. It's displeasing, right? Ew, ew, life, ah, this day, eat, right? Is it life or is it, is my instrument out of tune? And how do I get back into tune? The thoughts. Nothing's happening to me. Everything is happening through me. It's all based on my perception. And my perception, I got this Jeremy filter. It's so thick that by the time he or she or that bird or that tree gets through to the Jeremy filter, I've created it to be something totally separate from what it even is. It's just covered in my opinions, right? Him, her, it, work, bunny, that, this, colors, everything. So got to watch the filter, man, you know? This is what needs to be taught to children at a very young age. Wouldn't that be cool? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I say we start the Jeremy Jackson school. <laughs> <laughs> I love kids. You're no. the architect of your own life. You build and choose its foundation. You build its contents. You choose its contents and build its foundation. Anything that is not lovely, anything that you don't like, you don't have to have. You don't have to use it. You know? Jeremy, you've let go of an ego that I used to see that used to sit on your shoulders and you're beautiful and kind and loving and present and, and all the goodness, but it, it is, I mean, I guess it's the same question. I guess it's, you're going to have the same answer, but like, how did you really just release something that for your 30, your 43, 43. your 43. Yeah. So a good 35, 36, 37 years, you're hanging on to that. Well, you can't get rid of the ego, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can't get rid of it. So you befriended yours? <laughs> I just decided what it was, you know? Ego is just a sense of self, you know? It's just a sense of self. My idea of who I think I am, the role or the character I have decided I am today. Of course, I don't do this perfectly, um, but I'm practicing it enough to sound like I do it perfectly, maybe to some people, but I would say 80-20, dude. Yeah. Like 80% yeah. of the time, I'm happy, joyous, and free. And 20%, 10% of the time, I'm a little bit like, huh? Wait, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm a little lost. Oh, man, I'm slept in today. Oh, I hate it when I sleep in. Why do I do that? You know, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. maybe 10 or less, I'm like, Run. M- yeah, upset or pissed off or I'm pretty sure it's somebody else's fault and it doesn't last very long because it's not happening too many. It's, it's happening through me and whatever, whatever. Right. So these things have buried in too deep. So here was the new and triumphant archway, which we passed to freedom, the keystone, right? Three positions. When I took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things started to happen. I had a new employer being all powerful He provided what I needed, provided I was doing his work well. I lost interest in selfish things and gained interest in what I could, right? What I could do for others. Um, My little plans and designs, this felt less important as I felt new power flow in, right? You know this. Yeah. So there's three positions, child, agent, um, player. We have to make this one up because there's no definition in this book. We won't talk about to keep You the can, traditions. by the way. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a member of a 12 step program. Me I say too. that as far as which one, you know, we stay anonymous with that one. Um, so there's three positions. So if who I believe I am today is just a child of God, I'm probably going to be okay. If who I've decided to be today is just an agent following the director, I'm probably going to be okay. If who I've decided to be today is just a player in the big show, just a player, I'm not the director, all right? There's a principal, there's a director, and there's a father. And I'm the child, and I'm a player, and I'm an agent. So 
if I'm a vessel of divine love, you get to choose your sense of ego every day. I'm a vessel of divine love today. And we do this in meditation today. What is my idea of what the great mystery would have me be today? And I think about it. Ah, he wants, oh, he wants me to be a lover. Okay, I'm going to be a lover today. What would he have me do? What's his vision for me? Using my will to become present to the will. You know what I mean? So you really make these considerations. And the more you consider them, the more you become aware of them, the more you work with them on a daily basis, it just becomes like natural. You know? You you almost take um, this 12-step program you're speaking of and turn it into this sort of childlike story that people can actually follow and listen to in a way that it's like, by the way, I'm obsessed and, and live it. I'm learning daily. Yeah. Um, but you make it that much more exciting. So <laughs> I, <laughs> you really do. Trying. You, I mean, this must be a little bit of, and I hate to, to, to go here, but I'm going to open this door, but you were a child actor. Mm-hmm. And so this skill within you, storytelling slash creative performance, characters, performance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is mm-hmm. obvious. This is playing a, yeah. this is a good tool. And this is where all things work together for the good. Right? This is where what was meant to destroy you brings new life. This is where the scars help other people (laughs) heal. uh, I'm a custom created, custom crafted key to unlock the shut box of somebody else who's sure to kill themselves or have a miserable existence. There's another great sense of ego. If that's all I am today, I'm probably going to be okay. You know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm just speechless over here. I really am. I release all things that no longer serve me. If it doesn't bring joy and love to me or all of mankind, I don't want it. If it's not helping me and everybody else, why do I want it? Nobody wants it. No. And you're just like, yeah, that's so simple. Totally, I let that. I let that old idea go. Yeah, but a lot of people have a hard time getting there. Yeah. You know? Well, nobody really changes anything until it hurts too bad to keep doing the same that's why i said i found heaven from back in out of hell yeah right yeah well well, i did too yeah Yeah. cool Mm -hmm. what doesn't kill you makes you stronger that's right who sang that song he makes you stronger yeah Yeah. who is it kelly clarkson kelly clarkson (laughs) did i just say that you did right on but it's true whatever uh, doesn't kill you, makes you stronger, yeah, for bunch sure. Of new, new gained perspective on what doesn't work. Yeah. Just picture an old toaster and throw it away. Right? Yeah, you make it sound so simple. Yeah, simple. I don't know. That's how my, no, my I, mind I, works I, well I, like that. I like, like it. I appreciate this. I'm yeah. going to now just, yeah. Yeah, it's not help. It's not, <laughs> it's not working. Yeah. I mean, no, it's not. It's it's Wait, a choice. I never thought of it yeah. like that. It's it's a choice. Yeah, a walk in the light is a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you did not fall asleep one night and wake up tomorrow. No, no. It's no. consistency. I would imagine discipline. Yeah. Um. Obviously, the reprogramming of our thick skulls mm-hmm. and what's in between either yeah. side. And I think I don't know. To me, you sound. You know, I hear a lot of like. Joe Dispenza and you. I love him. Right. I love him. But you get it. Like, you get it. Joel S. Goldsmith, if you've never listened to him. Nope. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Joel S. Goldsmith from the 60s. But I hear Alan Watts in you. I love Alan Watts, yeah. Yep. Magical. Yeah, and... uh, uh, I'll share it with you after. You know, I I took these... I took these 12 steps in a particular form. I uncovered... What are the seven areas of self, which are in the book, uh, self-esteem, pride, ambition, security, personal relations, sexual relations, and pocketbook. Heard it a million times, right? Mm -hmm. But there's some way deeper extracts from that. So personal uh, uh, self-esteem, the role of the character I have assigned myself, the role of the character. What role or character? I'm Mr. I know better than you, right? Um, the way the other players are supposed to see me, pride. The way the other, you're supposed to see me as older and smarter. So you listen to me, but they're not listening to me, right? And 
I'm being treated as if I don't know better and don't you know that I know I know better. So now, of course, I'm displeased because I'm not getting what I want, mm. right? Mm. My my itch isn't getting scratched by you appreciating me for who I think I am. So now I'm displeased and I can't be one. I can't be one with life. I can't be one with this moment. I can't be one with you. And I have my own personal hell. Ambition, what I want out of this scene in order to be okay. Security, what I need out of this scene to be okay. Personal relations, my deep-seated idea of what a real, uh, of what a relationship like this is supposed to look like. Sexual relations, my deep-seated idea of what a real man would do in this situation. Pocketbook is just money. So you go deeper into these seven areas of self to uncover, discover, and discard all your old toasters that don't work anymore. You know, oh, that sucks. I need you to at least listen, but they're not listening. So I can't be happy because I need them to listen. Well, I wanted you to at least not have that ugly look on your face while I was telling you my feelings, but they got an ugly look on their face. So I can't be happy and it's your fault because of your ugly look. At bare minimum, at least don't give me that R RBF, right? Deep-seated idea of what a relationship like this is supposed to look like. Well, it's supposed to look like I've been really nice. And matter of fact, you know what? I paid for nine lunches and you never even thanked me. Right? <laughs> and my my deep-seated idea of what a real man would do in this real situation. Well, the real man wouldn't be bothered. But here I am crying inside and I'm bothered, right? So I'm not a real man, right? And I'm not getting what I want and I'm not getting what I need. And I'm sure it's other people's fault. And then we go into the thoughts. Well, or we go we go into the... Into the selfish action. What was the selfish action? Well, I slammed the door in their face. I didn't call when they, I didn't pick up the phone when they called me. That's selfishly. I was too angry thinking about myself and my little wants and needs to, to deal with them in that moment. Um, and what was I thinking? Well, I was thinking they deserved it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And what's the lie? What's, uh, what's the lie underneath that thought? Well, the lie is that, They'd learn from me ignoring them, you know, that that punishment would somehow help them. You know, what's the fear? What, what, what's the fear underneath that lie you're telling? Oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm afraid to be alone, you know? Oh, well, what are you right now? I'm alone. Oh, so fear is the evil and corrosive thread shot through the very fabric of your existence. And the very thing you fear the most is the thing you're manifesting in your life. Isn't that interesting? You're afraid to be alone. What does that really mean? Well, I'm afraid to be alone because if I'm alone, I'll feel my feelings. And, and well, why are you afraid to feel your feelings? Well, I'm afraid to feel my feelings because if I feel my feelings, I might lose my mind and, and I hate myself. Well, why are you afraid to hate yourself? Well, if I hate myself, I'll, I'll probably get loaded again. Well, if you get loaded, why are you scared to get loaded again? Well, I'm scared to get loaded again because I'll probably die. And or or and why are you scared to die? Well, I'm afraid there's no afterlife. This it's all for nothing. Oh, so you're really godless, and and uh, that's it. That's your real problem. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid of being alone. You're afraid that there's no rhyme or reason to life. You better fucking find a rhyme or reason to a life. And all those other fears will vanish by themselves. They're, they'll die from atrophy because you'll too, be too busy plugging in. Mm -hmm. And you won't be paying attention to those other little fears. And you'll find yourself no longer being scared to be alone. Yeah, because you can never really be alone. You know? Whoa. Amen. So cool. So fun. So cool and so fun. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that's, a, that's an inventory. That's an inventory. That's how you take an inventory. And you see the truth yeah. of the self, the elusive self lying to you. That little fucker who's just got blinders on, not all the pieces to the puzzle, and thinks he knows how it's supposed to go together. You know, he's doing math with material world digits and, and decimal points. And there's phantom forces working all the freaking time. There's 90% below the iceberg. And here we are building up these fantasies based on what we think and we know and we can see, taste, touch, and smell. And that's actually the shit that's killing us. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the more you let go, the more you have. And the more you give, the more you receive. And nothing... Is falling apart. Everything is falling together, right? And everything that I have is all that I need. And everything I need, I already have. And you just say this shit to yourself all freaking day long. And when it becomes your continuous number one thought, you'll be stoked. And then no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Then you'll move mountains and walk on water, you know?
then you'll be a healed person healing people. And you'll be in the universal energy flow, which is you just keep giving it away. You're an abundant fountain. The more you give it away, the more you get it back. And it's freaking awesome. It's the time of my life. This is a tough one because I have no <laughs> <laughs> All I'm thinking right now is, God, I got to sleep. And I listen to God talk to me while I'm sleeping. I put on YouTube and they talk to me and they the Bible. And like cool. I'm like, I just want to turn on Jeremy tonight <laughs> and fall asleep to you reprogramming my mind. Well, that's God and you recognizing God in me. You only spot it because you got it. It only resonates because it's true and you know it. It's authentic. It's organic, you know? And... um you and, know, and you're having the time of your life. And everybody's meant to, too. You know, right? and I win more when other people get free. I love that you're having the time of your life. I'm yeah. having the time of my life right Yay! now. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Wait, so oh you're taking goodness. this. Qu- you, I see you in Costa Rica all the time. Uh huh. Is this a, just a personal? I'm going to head to Costa Rica. Can we talk about your breath work? And do you take everything that you just sort of said to Costa Rica with a group of men? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Balance men. And when can maybe Alicia and I take you right? to Costa Rica yeah. and you do all that with us? So yes, definitely. Um, hundred percent. Anytime you let me know, I got the retreat center. It's beautiful. The food is epic. The food's amazing. The scenery is amazing. It's a 10 minute walk to the beach. And you, you know. host the retreat. I'll do it. Done. Yeah, 100%. Done. And Josh yeah. is coming. A hundred percent. Of course he is. Let's, yeah. I'm just glad we've, we got to interview you before no, Oprah I, Winfrey. I'm ready for action. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's Wait, it, it's Oprah- called the balanced man retreat. <laughs> and it, um, a year ago, on New Year's Day. Um, so I've been working in treatment centers, mental health mm. facilities, treatment centers and detoxes. I'm blessed. I love it. I, I just, whatever. I surrendered to the work. I made it, you know, morning, just morning, noon and night. Just, just, I made my life about the work and the formula and applying the formula and getting familiar with the formula until the formula became visceral and just, just did it, did it, did it, did it. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Oh. And, um, then got these great jobs, you know, and I hadn't had a job in a while and I wasn't sure where I was going to go and I wasn't sure where I was going to live. And I just, uh, you know, embrace the mystery. The more I let go, the more I have and everything just lined up for me. And then I have a job that's three times better than the one I was going to take and three times more money and way less uh, hours and all this cool stuff. So I did that for like two years and I was like, it's time to take it out of the country. Like, ah, and I, me and my girlfriend made vision boards and we put up palm trees and threes and sixes and nines and triangles and sowing seeds of change and working together and master of his craft and, you know, uh, all this kind of stuff, you know, and it's, I look at it every day and then, um, a buddy of mine that I did a breath work for, who's incredible. You gotta, you gotta talk to him uh, if you get the chance. He's like, I'm doing a retreat and I want you to come. Um, clean and sober went out there, no desire. I mean, what I have is, you know, I, I got the gold, man. You know, I got it. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to trade it in for anything. Mm -hmm. I love it. There's not even a question, but, um, I was like, I I should bring my jujitsu gi out there, you know? So the dream's coming true. The, the manifestation is, is here. I'm going and, and I'm getting paid and it's like, what? This is so cool. And I, I should bring my jujitsu gi just in case. Touchdown. Boom. I walk into the retreat center, going down the stairs. It's this beautiful like condo complex and it's just all inclusive with a restaurant and a bar. And I look over to my right and there's like five heavy bags, boxing glove, kettlebells and a big blue mat. And there's four guys doing jujitsu with gi on at the place turns out the owner is a former mma pro fighter and he just loves me and we're fighting all day doing jujitsu i'm in paradise i'm like (laughs) right this is so cool um and he's like man i'm like i love this breath work thing dude he he's like you got me he's a guy from tennessee like a good old boy from tennessee pro fighters like you got me thinking i want to do reiki <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know he's getting certified now uh, under <laughs> under me and he's like i'm doing this this retreat it's starting in a month i haven't done it yet and i want you to be a part of the team so i'm like i've been to costa rica four times in the last freaking three months I keep going out there. Balance man retreat um, for men who aren't ready to give up yet. Mm-hmm. You know, freedom through discipline. Th- freedom through discipline. Right? Discipline beats inspiration and motivation all day long. You got to be, you got to train your feet, man. Train your feet. 
train your feet, suit up, show up and have that positive mantra while we're doing it. And we have fun. We shoot, we do intuitive archery. We ride ATVs, all that's out there surfing, um, nature walks, like wildlife tours. Uh, we do meditations, sound baths, cacao ceremonies, yoga, uh, death ceremony, which was powerful, man. Oh my gosh. I've never done one. Have you ever done one? I've done different sort of pre grief, right? As if you're lying there yeah, and you, yeah. yes, yes. Everything yes, you're going to yes, say. Yes. Yes. <sighs> that was cool. That was really cool. And a lot of brotherhood, a lot of fellowship, you know, talking about the fears, man, the, 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 the fear and helping people uncover their underlying fears, what they're really afraid of. So they can use that golden key to beat up that fear. So that fear dies from atrophy because they're too busy or thinking about the solution. Too busy. I just hear action, 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 yep. action, 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 yep. action, action. Yep. Exactly. The repetition of the formula supersedes all. Yeah, you've just turned, you know, sort of the sense of self into a different yeah, perspective, right? Yeah. You're just giving and you're just this light. You're the, really, truly a light. The paradox. I had to become it and just know that it would happen for me if I became it, if I did the work. That the I have not submitted one resume. I have not solicited uh, one. I, you know what I mean? I did not build a website and or get anybody to create a calendar of events. I just did my own little internal work and knew that it would come. And I think that's how it happens for everybody, you know? I hear my own little internal work. Let's not kid. The work that we do in the 12 <laughs> steps is yeah. work. Yeah. And, you know, finally this time around in the last nine months, I, I kept, it works if you work it, it works if you work it. And one day I was like, duh. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. I swear for nine and a half years, I just said it to just say it and it didn't make sense to me. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, you have to do the work. The old things becoming new. That's like straight out of the Bible. Old things become new. See. Yeah. Do it all over again as if it's for the first time. Right? Have a new experience with it. Oh my God. I had the same thing. Middle, in the middle of this yeah. thing, in the middle of this thing, right? And I always just thought it was like a physical middle. No, it's a mental middle. You're always in some kind yeah. of really, really four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? What is that? That's right in the middle. So I'm right. always like checking. Right. And I'm just with my sponsor. I'm right. 10, 11, in the, bring what, it back right? into three, four, five. Oh, it's cool. That's what that means. It's neat. And you don't, you realize more will be revealed. And you're like, what are you, what? Okay. And your ego's like, oh, whatever. All of a I sudden you're like, ah! Yeah. yeah. And just, it keeps, it, it, it's a never ending journey. Yeah. And the, that somehow that what seems like a absolute punishment right. becomes the biggest reward in the world. You embrace it with joy, <sighs> right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such yeah. a gift. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's and then weird. you're living. Your best life, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm living my best life. I'm better than I ever have been. Yeah. Yeah. Becoming unfuckwithable. The process yeah. to get unfuckwithable, you know? And yeah. That's cheesy shit like, uh, you know, life isn't about avoiding the storms. It's learning how to dance in the rain. But I love that thing. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I do too. But it makes so much sense yeah. now. Like, oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. I heard that so many times yeah. and just thought it was Lame, but it's it's great, beautiful, and I wouldn't like. I'd love to dance in the rain with the two of you. I mean, what a good! I'd life. love to dance in the rain with you. <laughs> Get the mud yeah. and squishing in between yeah. my toes. Uh, yeah, <sighs> I'm processing. Everything's a blessing. Everything's a gift. Everything's meant to be. There's no mistakes. You know, it's just about how much access will I have to it. You know, how much me do I have on me? Wow. You're um, highly evolved. You know, I mean, you, you've you come to this this next level of, of just being present. Um, but for those that haven't, what do you say to them? Well, I had some old school therapist who used to tell me stuff like uh, don't drink or use even if you shit a kitten <laughs> <laughs> said I don't care if your ass falls off don't drink or use just for today mm. um, so you know 
we win only by surrendering. We awaken only by dying to our former self. We receive only in giving, right? It's a paradox. So everything you think you know and everything you think you need and all of the ways you feel are the death of you. And everything that you need to do, feel, and see is beyond your comprehension and conception. To the people that are struggling, Albert Einstein says that the mind that created the problem is not the mind that can solve the problem. You cannot solve the problem with the mind that created the problem. It's impossible. That is the insanity we talk of. Soundness of mind, sanity, soundness of mind, sound, this table is sound. I can walk on this table and it will hold me. A bridge is sound. I can jump on it, right? Um, something that bears load and bears weight. And if your mind is bedeviled, if you are having problems in your personal relationships, if you can't control your emotional natures, if you're prey to misery, prey to depression, full of fear and have a sense of uselessness, right? If you can't seem to be of real help to anybody of yourself, you're bedeviled, befogged, befunked. And you don't have access to the tools, the awarenesses, or the skill sets that are going to get you out of that. So you got to surrender. You got to admit you know not enough. And everything that you need to learn and experience will be at the hands of somebody who has championed what you've yet to champion. And, um, the more stuff, the more, uh, the more surrendered you can stay, uh, the more of that help you can access, take advantage of, and become original with. You can make it your own. You can be very special and have an experience that is so unique, form-fitted, and custom to you that you'll know it's God. There won't be any doubt. It'll be like you got something, just some little extra super considerate, special, unique things that nobody else knows. It came to you in a crazy way. You'll know. And then in that knowing, I mean, that's it. You know. And no one can take that away from you. It's yours. And it's not a car and it's not a 30-day chip it's not a job that you got that means you're sober enough to get a job, that you're grown up. Um, you know, it's, it's an inner knowing, it's inner peace, it's inner connection. And when you have that, you can apply that to any and every problem in your life and know that you're always exactly where you're supposed to be and the universe is conspiring in your favor. And, and you can tackle anything with that same formula. Continuous surrender. That makes sense. I see you right now. I've seen you before. I see you right now. You are literally just like this vibrating love. Like you are so beautiful. So beautiful. Your eyes like shine. Your smile, like your skin. You are so beautiful, Jeremy. I'm just a mirror. <laughs> I'm just a mirror. You only spot it because you got it. That's that same wonder that same curiosity that perfect child is in you too deep down in every man woman and child is that divine spark and it takes one spark to change the dark and you see my spark because you got it too and we come together with those sparks to create the great flame and bring more people into the fold and that's all i want to do so thank you for letting me do that with you thank you so I much you. I, love you. I love you too Thank you. You're special and precious. Ah. Uh, I'd be nothing without you guys, really. If a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, doesn't make a noise. So it's anything I know <laughs> or say have any weight or depth if there's not somebody right equally yoked to shine together with. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope these stories have touched your hearts and left you with a newfound appreciation for the incredible strength within us all. 
And if you found our podcast to be a source of inspiration, we'd be extremely grateful if you could take a moment to rate and review us. Yes, review us, review us. Your support helps us reach more people on the path to recovery. And while you're at it, hit that follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Remember, you're not alone. One day at a time, we got this.